That is John Black, Super Chemist. This is my diethyl ether. See, it's clear as whatever. The thing is, is I left it in the freezer for probably at least a month, maybe even longer. So I'm thinking I got peroxides in there, and I don't want them in there for any kind of Grignard reaction, which is what I did all this for. I want to get rid of those peroxides, so I got some uh, iron 2 sulfate. You can see that. I'm guessing it's a tetrahydrate. I'm not really sure. I don't have to be exact. So I weighed out 22.4 grams. That's about a tenth of a mole, I think. I can't really remember. And I'm going to add about 200 milliliters of cold water. And you can see, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but it's turning slightly green. Probably can't tell because it's real slight. But anyways, I'm going to start that. Get all that uh, dissolved in there. Now this oxidizes real easily just with air from the, you know, oxygen from the air. It'll go in there and turn it into iron-free uh, sulfate. Uh, so this is a really good reducer. Um, as a matter of fact, the way you make uh, iron-free sulfate is uh, you get your iron-2 sulfate and you put some hydrogen peroxide in it. The hydrogen peroxide gets reduced and the iron sulfate gets uh, oxidized to iron 3 sulfate. Um, so my plan is to just put this in and uh, the peroxides that are in there should be reduced and this should be oxidized. Now remember this diethyl ether, it hasn't been used, it's just been sitting there too long. Um, so it probably has some peroxides. I didn't store any. I should have stored some uh, sodium hydroxide in there or maybe some sodium metal. Um, but I didn't. So I'm going to pour it in the set funnel. Remember, do not do this around flames. If you have any pilot lights, like on your oven and you're doing it by an oven or something, turn the pilot lights off, turn the gas off, uh, have ventilation. I've chilled this down. You can see it's a nice green, real light green, no brown. And I'm just going to put it in a little bit at a time. You know, maybe 25, 50 milliliters. And I'm going to start, and keep in mind, uh, you got to vent a lot. I'm not going to vent it. I'm just going to, i got a hole on here. You know, beveled thing here. I'll just put it on there so it has room to escape, a little pathway. And I'll swirl it. You'll see it's still pretty green. Uh, it kind of looks brown on camera, but it's not. It's actually totally green. Um, so maybe there isn't as many peroxides as I thought made. It's only been a month. It hasn't been like, a, you know, six months or anything. All right, well, I'm going to let it sit like 20 minutes and see what happens, see if it turns brown at all. Oh, it's been about 15 minutes. I don't know if you can tell or not, but it has turned slightly brown, although it's still slightly green. It's like a 50-50 ratio. I'll drain this out. And I'm going to put some more in. Give that like 15 minutes. Notice that while I let it sit, I always put this on an ice bath. I usually use this, which is just basically the Kool Aid. You know, 
when I'm here in high school, uh, just to, you know, to get more of the thing. You know. But anyway, so you can see I put ice in it, and uh, it's been about 15 minutes, so I'm going to get this out of here. Actually, that's probably good enough. So I'm gonna, what am I gonna put in there next? Some cold water. Not measure, not I'm just putting a little bit in, shaking up, bent, you know, off of. Back on. Alright, so now I'm going to drain the regular water out. And I'm going to use table salt water. Saturated. There we go. Alright, so I'm going to drain out that bottom layer again, <laughs> the salt water. And I'm going to drain the diethylether into there. Sulfate in there. And a little bit of calcium chloride. And I'm going to stir it up. That's it. Put it on stir maybe 20 minutes or something. Then we'll distill it. I don't know if you can see through all the clutter, but I just left the stir bar and the salt in there, the calcium chloride and the magnesium sulfate, I left it in there. Now I'm just boiling this off. I use a Vigorex column because it's very low boiling point. So you might as well. It doesn't hurt, right? If it's that low. Because uh, the boiling point's only, what, 34.6 or something Celsius. Now you can see I got that ice bath right here. And I got definitely cold. You know, you can even see water condensating on the outside of the cooler here, condenser. Um, I got a little bit of uh, anhydrous, uh, I can't even remember what I put in there. I think copper sulfate. But anyways, I got some kind of anhydrous salt in there. I wrapped it up in uh, um, paper towel. And I shoved it in there. I make sure it's not a cork because you don't want to, you know, you want it to be a filter, not a, not a plug. You know what I'm saying? You want it to be in there, not too tight, so that you have a closed system. You want it in there, nice and loose, a little bit of, you know, so it can get through there. Um, and I got it leading all the way into the other room. Um, you shouldn't have any flames or anything around this. And basically, I'm just going to distill it off until, you know, it's... Now, this is how people explode. You know, you have peroxides in your um, pot here. And the peroxides will have a higher boiling point than the rest of the stuff. So you boil off the rest of the stuff, the ether, right? But as you do that, you're concentrating the peroxides. And when you get done, now you've got a concentrated... Uh, pot of peroxides. And the thing about peroxides is usually 
they explode before they boil, meaning the auto ignition temperature is lower than at a boiling point temperature. So as you're heating it, you're going to hit that before you hit the boiling point. You're going to hit the auto ignition temperature. And boom, that's how things happen bad in the lab. Okay. Um, so I would never boil this to, to dryness or advise anyone to do it. Um, even though we cleaned it with the uh, iron 2 sulfate, the reducer, um, we still don't take it up. We still don't boil it to dryness. So here's my dye off the ether. It's nice and clear, totally clear, obviously. Um, but we're going to add some molecular sieves about three days. And then this time we're not going to wait. I'm going to do the Grignard in three days, guaranteed, because I do not want to clean this stuff again. And I'm going to shake this around every once in a while, maybe a couple times a day I'll go in and shake it. And uh, three days from now we'll try to make some propanoic acids. Uh, not, like I said, I'm going to let this sit for three days. After that I'm going to do something that I really don't want to do. Um, and if you're doing a grenade, you really don't have to do it. I mean, it'll just, um, you know, you'll have a slighter smaller yield, you know what I mean? Um, but I'm going to put some sodium metal in it, okay? It's not pure sodium metal, it's sodium aggregate. <laughs> um, I'm going to do a separate video on that in three days when I, this dries out, and uh, that's all the video is going to be, is me putting sodium into this diethyl ether. Um, if there's too much water in there, it will ignite the hydrogen, and the hydrogen will ignite the diethyl ether, and you will have, you know, it'll catch on fire, and you'll have a big fire bomb going off. A lot of people supposedly die. You know, well, not a lot, but I'm sure a few catch on fire, and they, you know what I mean, it explodes the wrong way, or, you know, there's something there, it explodes. Um, it's not good, that's for sure. You don't want this exploding on you and getting catching you on fire. So the next video will either be me, this exploding or it will be me putting it in there and that's it. It will be nice, easy, you know, making little bubbles. Anyways, y'all, have a great day and always remember, science is great.